We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast, but the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just $2.79. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police. Clint, Barney, and the others were arrested at Nagchuka, the main gateway to Lhasa, charged with being spies. The boys are on the trail of Paul Mounier, whom everyone thinks is a scientist who has brought his valuable inventions and experiments to Tibet. In reality, Mounier is the octopus. He has framed the secret police so that they will be unable to follow him to his new headquarters, but Clint clears his party of the alleged guilt by having the Tibetan police chief cable Chief Riley in New York. Riley's reply proves their innocence, and we now find the boys and Chief Tipo talking over the next move. I cannot tell you how perturbed I am over your past treatment, Mr. Barlow, but you must understand the word of such a noted man as Paul Mounier makes... Yes, of course, Chief Tipo. Let's forget the whole thing. But this Mounier, tell me more about him. As I have already said, he has come to Tibet often, but never to stay. This time, however, he plans staying here. Not if we can help it. We're going to take that guy back to the good old USA as our prisoner. I'll say so, Barney. You still insist that Mounier is the octopus? Yes. And don't forget that you promised to tell us his whereabouts and also aid in his capture if proof came that we were the secret police. Well, that proof has come. I know, Mr. Barlow, but you must appreciate my position, my responsibility. Should you be wrong about Mounier... My government would be placed in a most embarrassing position. Yes, I realize that. And for that reason, we must work in absolute secrecy. But work we must. Now first, where is Mounier headed for? He has taken the house overlooking the pass of the Iron Dagger. It is a little to the north of Lhasa. Is it the only house there? Yes, Speed. My countrymen have no love for the pass. It is wild and desolate. This house was built some years ago by an exiled prince. In fact, he went mad in it. And since that time, no one has lived in the house. No? It is well built, richly furnished, but the shepherds have brought down strange tales about it. They say it is haunted. Well, I feel sorry for any spook that's haunting that house now that the octopus has moved in. He'll de-ghost it soon enough. Is the place easy to reach, Chief Tipo? No, to my knowledge, there is only one route to the house. A narrow, winding trail that is slippery and treacherous. Is particularly when the hour of the wind is at hand. Wind? I've gotten more wind in my face since coming to Tibet than I have any other place in the world. Don't you get sick of it, chief people? We hardly notice it, Mr. Dunlap. Tibetans are accustomed to wind and snow. Yeah, I guess the beach at Waikiki would bore you to tears, but not me, boy. Oh, come back from Hawaii, Barney. We're still on the trail of the octopus. Don't I know it? 
My neck's still stiff from that avalanche he sent down on us at our last stop. Avalanche? Sure. The octopus uses avalanches and typhoons for calling cards. You'll help us, Kathleen, won't you, Chief Tipo? Give us the men and ammunition we need. I'll help the secret police any way I can, Speed. But we must work in secrecy until we are sure that Mounier and the octopus are the same man. Sure, we can do that all right. In fact, that'd be all the better. If the octopus knew we were coming, he'd have a chance to clear out again or hide what he was doing. The pass of the Iron Dagger is not very far from here, is it? No, it is at the head of the valley near Lhasa. Good. You send out the call for your best men, Chief Depot. And we shall advance on the pass as soon as possible. You ain't gonna fly there, Clint. Oh, let the octopus know we're around, huh? Oh, don't be foolish. Uh, just the same, I'd like that plane handy for a quick getaway. There won't be a getaway this time, Bonnie. What do you mean, Clint? We'll stay until we capture the octopus, or he destroys us. But I've got a hunch that the pass of the Iron Dagger is going to be the end of the trail for him. And Clint Barlow thought that he could end my activities. Instead, I stopped him. He will be forced to return empty-handed. He will be the laughing stock of the service. But there is the barest chance, Master, that he convinced Chief Tipo that you really were the octopus instead of Paul Mounier. No chance of that, Quan Wu. I know Chief Tipo too well. And speaking of Mounier, how do I look now since applying this makeup? Would you recognize me? No. But what if Tipo sees you? He will notice the change in your appearance. Tipo will not see me. He remains safe in Nagchuka. There is little chance of his even coming to Lhasa, much less to my lonely house. True. But other government officials know you and remember you took out citizenship papers here in Tibet. Some years ago, yes. But the changes I have made in my face will not be noticed by those who have only seen me a few times. The gray hairs and glasses I have added, they might be the product of years, too. They indeed give you the appearance of a man of science. Quite. But now let me put away this makeup. I have other things to do. The workers will soon arrive with my Tibetan agent. How will they come? By the hidden ways, the underground passages. Do you know who I could bring an army into this house without anyone outside knowing about it? Excellent. We may need an army. We are well protected. My aviators are standing by at Black Pass. They can fly here on a moment's notice should the need arise. Do you intend bringing Marsha Winfield here? Not right away. First, I wish to get the slave route started between here and India, over the Himalayas. There is time enough for the girl. What are you going to do with her? I am not sure yet. With Barlow out of the way, there is no need for me to hold her as hostage. You are sure that he and the others no longer pursue us, Master? Yes, but do not worry. I shall make doubly sure before I destroy the girl and splinters along with her. I must silence both their tongues forever. Meanwhile, they wait in Lhasa under the eye of my Tibetan agent. Ah, the wind is starting again. Let it blow. Master, in spite of all your plans, in spite of our steaming safety, I have the feeling of disaster. I do not like this place. We should never have come here. Guan Wu, I would advise you to keep such feelings to yourself. I, uh, I have not told you everything about this house. <laughs> what do you mean? It was built by a madman and has dungeons, torture rooms such as you have never seen. If you anger me too much... Master, you would not destroy your faithful servant. You can serve me only as long as you are fearless. When a man becomes a coward, he is useless to me, and I destroy useless things. But I do not deserve such a fate. You shall bring about your own fate by your future actions, Quan Wu. I advise you to lose your cowardice instead of losing your courage. <laughs> if you do not want to lose your life. Thank heaven, now we can get the whole story. What's up, Speed? They told us we were cleared of the spy charges, but wouldn't tell us anything more. Gee, I'm sorry, Bob. And you and Clinton Barney have been in the chief of police's office for so long. 
afraid about giving up hope of ever getting out of here. Don't worry about that, Jean. You'll get out of jail, all right. But you're going to stay in Nogchuco while we go up to a place called the Pass of the Iron Dagger. Pass of the Iron Dagger? But why, Speed? Because we think that's where the octopus is. The octopus? Then you've convinced Chief Tipo that the octopus is really in Tibet? Well, not quite. You see, he thinks the octopus is a scientist, Paul Mounier. But he's willing to help us in attacking his hideout. Where is it? A house overlooking this Iron Dagger Pass. Worst of it is, though, we've got to do the whole thing in secret... Because he won't get Tipo and bad if Mounier isn't the octopus. I don't quite understand. The whole story is awful mixed up, Dr. Kingsley. But it'd take too long for me to tell you everything that's happened while we've been in there. We want to start to the octopus hangout as soon as Cheap Tipo gets his men together. Oh, Speed, please don't go to that pass of the Iron Dagger. I'm afraid. Nothing for you to be afraid of. You'll be safe here, Nogchuka. Oh, it isn't me I'm afraid for. But you... Golly, I wouldn't miss this for anything, Jean. We've tracked the octopus halfway across the world, and now we've just about got him. It's going to be great. I'll say so. Just let me get to that octopus, and I'll make him take tell me where Marsha and Larry Winfield are if I have to choke it out of him. Well, I... I don't think you're going with us on this trip, Bob. What? No. Clint thought you ought to be here in case anything goes wrong. In case anything goes wrong? Well, then I should be with you. Where's Clint? Just let me talk Here to him. Here he comes now with Barney. Oh, hello there, Bob. What's all the excitement about? Well, Speed just told me I wasn't going with you on the octopus raid. Well, that's right. You'll be more valuable here. I must have someone that I can depend on to keep me in touch with what's going on here. And then, too, you can keep an eye on Dr. Kingsley and Jean. Well, I'm afraid we're causing you a great deal of trouble, Glenn. No, not at all, Doctor. But we all need a little more patience. Now, once the octopus is captured, well, then we can relax. And I'll see Marsha again. You bet you will, honey. Well, Clint... When do we start disguising ourselves as yaks or yaws, as you want to call it? What are you talking about, Barney? <laughs> uh, because we must work in secrecy, Bob. We're disguising ourselves as Tibetan shepherds. Tipo's men won't have to change their appearance since they are native Tibetans. Yeah. All they have to do is put on shepherd clothes. But we've got to make up to look like Tibetans. Well, do you think such a disguise will avert suspicion, Clint? Uh, yes, I do, Doctor. Should any of us be discovered before I give the signal for attack, we can say that we're looking for some lost animals. It'll be logical enough. It's sure going to be exciting. It'll be night by the time he reaches the pass and the wind has come up. It'll be just like something you read in books. Well, believe me, kid, I wish I was reading all this in a book. Octopus hunting on Iron Dagger Pass on a windy night ain't my idea of a pleasant evening. Oh, don't talk so much, Barney. We barely have time to get our makeup on. Chief Tipo is getting his men ready fast. Well, go ahead. Make me up. I ain't stopping you. But I'd a lot rather go on a raid for once with my eyes wide open instead of being taped up to look Chinese or Tibetan. I want to see where I'm going. <laughs> Maybe you had the right idea first. I'll make you up as a yeah. As long as we have to drive you, might as well make it look realistic. Hey, you'll be wanting me to bleat next or moo. What does a yak do? Search me, Barney. The ones he's seen so far haven't made any noise. <laughs> Barney gave him too much competition. <laughs> uh, everyone seems mighty gay, considering that we're about to go after the number one criminal of the world. Why not, Barney? Isn't Clint the number one secret policeman of the world? I wonder what will happen when you really stand face to face. I'd like to see that meeting. Yeah, I hope we'll be able to, Doc. Exactly. And that's why we might as well laugh now. Because something tells me the meeting at the Pass of the Iron Dagger will be no laughing matter.
all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast, but the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just two seventy nine. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. With the Lucky Land Plus, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.